Imagine being stuck at home because of a pandemic and you decide that it might be a fun idea to develop a CDI game. Surely no one could ever be driven to such madness. Or can they? Well, luckily for us, someone did take up this challenge recently. Hey there, this is Seb and I'd like to talk to you about this recent CDI homebrew game, Nobelia. Now, homebrew titles for all the consoles are always a bit special, aren't they? I mean, it's just great seeing your favorite retro system actually seeing a new release in these modern times. Now, unfortunately, CDI doesn't see a whole lot of homebrew projects, so it's always super exciting when someone, in this case, Jeffrey Janssen, aka TW Burn, actually pours in some time and uses his knowledge to bring something to all of those CDI fans out there. And yes, those do exist. Now Jeffrey is no stranger to CDI as he has previously worked on bringing a design for a USB adapter to CDI. So this time he actually decided to develop a full-fledged game. And as soon as it was out I decided, you know, I want that and I picked it up and well, let's check it out. The game comes in a fold-out cardboard case with a plastic CD holder and is nicely designed and well printed. It looks vibrant and gives some basic information on the game with an overview of the controls, items found within the game and a map. The game disc is actually pressed, which I honestly didn't expect, but it's a nice touch. The quality in the packaging is there for sure. But let's just pop that bad boy in and see what it's actually like. Once loaded you will be presented with a nice menu system and there is a screen available to view the controls. Now this might be a small thing, but just the menu system like this is already a bit of a departure from typical CDI titles. And it might just be me, but I really find it nice to see a more typical console game experience running on the machine. When you start up a new game there is no real story to speak of. You play as a female character, you see your well getting blown up, so you decide to jump straight in, cause why not? It plays much like a 2D Zelda game, so obviously the next thing you want to do is head into the first cave you'll see, since as we all know, it's dangerous to go alone. In the cave you will eventually find your weapon of choice. Bombs, baby! Making this game a bit of a mix between Zelda when it comes to exploration and Bomberman when it comes to solving the actual puzzles and dealing with enemies. Finding the bombs also allows you to freely explore the other areas of the game and nick all the goodies hidden within. You'll be needing to power up your abilities somewhat to get to the end of the game and along the way you will be able to find 7 golden coins hidden throughout the levels. Something you've probably noticed by now is that the sprites are rather small, which unfortunately doesn't look too flattering when using RCA video output. It's a necessity in a game like this though, as each screen still needs enough objects to be engaging, there is no screen scrolling. The claim of over 30 levels refers to the number of screens by the way, which I guess is kind of misleading as an empty cave with just a chest to open can hardly be called a challenge, but that's just semantics. The assets used fit the game well and I do enjoy the overall looks of the game. The audio is fine too, although I did notice a few stutters now and then, especially when loading new screens. The game does not need the DVC expansion and it plays just fine without it, with both music and sound effects playing at the same time, something not even all commercial games could claim. I do wonder if the expanded memory a DVC would allow for could have possibly helped with the occasional slowdowns. On crowded screens the game can feel rather sluggish and with bombs about to go off and you needing to get the hell out of dodge, yeah, that inconsistency in the game's speed can really mess up your timing. For a CDI action game the controls are actually quite responsive, especially when the game is running at a more comfortable speed. A slight tap will point you in a direction and pushing it down further will actually make you walk that way. Now I do find it a bit difficult to be precise with the tapping, which does lead to some singed eyebrows when I want to be fancy. But let's be honest here, the CDI was mostly intended for pointing devices, so you will always lose some responsiveness when translating that into an action oriented game. As such, the game strikes a nice balance in making it playable. When it comes down to input devices, obviously your best friend will be one of these, a proper controller. However, I did also try out the game with one of these remote things which originally came with the 470 or 490 consoles and it works surprisingly well to a point where I say that this isn't really a necessity. The spoon for the 450 should work just as fine as well. Now obviously not all input devices will be as viable, 
but most of the more accessible stuff for CDI should see you through the game just fine. What also helps is that the game is never too punishing, you've got infinite lives and if you do die, you will just respawn on the same screen in a reset state. This kind of plays into the scoring system of the game as well, which is just a timer. I actually think this is a rather smart move, since it fits nicely into the popular speedrunning trends we see nowadays. Good luck with the part that is inspired by the Lost Woods though, as there you will have to guess the right direction 4 times in a row and this sequence seems to be randomized with each time a new game is started. You can almost taste the delicious tears RNG's Jesus will no doubt cause with his shenanigans right at the end of the game. If this game were to become a speedrunning niche, which I doubt, but hey, one can hope. A full playthrough of the game is actually a rather short endeavor unfortunately. A casual run should take you no more than 50 to 60 minutes or so and the challenge isn't too tough. Although the maze isn't the most difficult part. No no no, that's for shortly afterwards when he arrives. I spent like half my playtime on this one screen. Right at the end of the game Mr. Skellington decides to throw down on a proper Bomberman match. Or it would be proper if the bastard wouldn't cheat. Randomly tossing out bones ain't in no Bomberman rulebook I ever saw. But with some abusing of the cape, which gives you some fire immunity, he eventually goes down, after which his bros come out to avenge him. Yeah, you'll need to beat him 3 times in a row. This makes for a rather frantic sort of end boss, and one where the slowdown can actually get really annoying too, as during the fight the sprite count can vary quite a bit. It even got me panic button mashing, damn it. You want to be careful with that too, as pressing button 1 and 2 together brings up the pause menu and pressing button 2 at that point will send you straight back to the main menu. You can continue and you will keep all the items that you've collected but you will appear back at the hub area of the game and all of the screens will have been reset. As long as you play, the state of the screen is actually saved upon completion and it's small touches like this that I actually find really impressive. My biggest complaint on the whole thing is honestly also kind of a compliment and that is that I just want more of it. It was fun and it feels like it's over way too soon. Now there is some replay value as in the order you play the different sections can kind of alter your experience somewhat, but it won't ever drastically change the way you play through the different screens. The secrets are a bit lacking too in that you will be able to find them using the tools you will find within their sections. It's convenient, but also sort of defeats the whole idea of an open world experience. They don't really offer anything special either, apart from a separate scoring table for a full game clear. There is a third time ranking, which is for the demo which is also included on the disc, which is a really nice bonus. And it offers a few more screens to play through. It is odd to see though, that there are some ideas in the demo which don't seem to have made it into the final game. In conclusion, is this game worth your money? Well, obviously at the end of the day, that's totally up to you. For me, I was very impressed with what Jeffrey was able to pull off in such a short amount of time and I had a lot of fun with the game, so yeah, it was worth it in my book. And I do recommend you check it out yourself, if not the full-fledged game, then at least a demo and you will find all relevant links down in the description. Also, if you did try it out, then do let me know what you thought about the game and also I'm curious to know what kind of game or project would you like to see most for CDI? I do hope to see more from Jeffrey in the future, but also I kind of hope that a project like this can inspire others to bring their new um, homebrew projects to the CDI. Well, that's it for me guys, thank you very much for watching and you will be able to see me next time. Until then, take care, the muzzle.